This is definitely one of my favorite millipede species. Hi, Russ of Aquarimax here. Are ivory millipedes the best pet invertebrate? Well, today, after a short introduction to the species, we'll talk about housing and care, and then the pros and cons of keeping ivory millipedes, so you can come to your own conclusion. The ivory millipede, Chicobolus spinigerus, is a native of Florida and some other neighboring southeastern states. The females get to about four inches long, and the males get to about three and a half inches long, something like that. They are, in addition to their fabulous patterning, a great millipede to keep for a lot of reasons. So let's now talk about their housing and care. Here is my ivory millipede enclosure. This is approximately the size of a five and a half gallon tank, somewhere around that size, fairly deep. Uh, you can see that I've ventilated it. On the sides we have some ventilation holes that are covered by uh, breathable medical tape to help keep fungus gnat pests out. And then the lid has been ventilated, cut out a circle here, and covered it with chiffon and used aluminum tape to secure that so that there's enough ventilation for the millipedes. They really don't need a lot, but they do need some. I have about 20 plus ivory millipedes in this enclosure. This one is an adult female. She may grow a little bit, but she is mature of breeding age. Look at that gorgeous sheen on that millipede right there. Fabulous. Anyway, I don't want to get too distracted. Let's talk about the substrate because substrate is really one of the most important considerations when you're keeping millipedes. Well, this substrate is the same that I use for my isopods. In many respects, isocod and millipede care is very, very similar. This substrate is made from one-third organic compost, one-third um, barbecue smoker pellets, like the ones used for uh, you know, smoking meats. Uh, the pellets need to be soaked in water uh, until they reach the consistency of wet sawdust. And then these fallen hardwood leaves that I collect in my backyard because I don't spray with pesticides. So it works very well, it's a very good mixture. And then I add a little bit of crushed eggshell for calcium. And my isopods and my millipedes thrive on it. And thanks to Mickey M for the inspiration for the recipe. She gave me her recipe and I just modified it for what I could find in my area. It works great. Once you have a nice substrate, and, and notice the substrate is pretty deep here. It's about six or seven inches deep because millipedes, when they molt, especially, prefer a fairly deep substrate. It should be at least as deep as the millipede is long. And so this substrate is uh, in, in excess of the maximum length of an ivory millipede, which is around four to four and a half inches. So that works great. Now let's talk about the food for these millipedes. The substrate, of course, is their main food. Uh, the substrate that I described will be a great food for the millipedes, but supplementary foods are great as well. They do love uh, vegetables and fruits and things like that. This is a, a zucchini. They've been gnawing on since yesterday. They've eaten quite a, a bit of it off, I can see. Uh, I also give them other foods like raw or cooked sweet potatoes. They like uh, canned corn. They like apples. They like mango. Uh, they'll eat many kinds of fairly soft vegetables and fruits. And for protein, I also give them various other foods such as uh, omega-1 fish food pellets. In addition to the omega-1 fish food pellets, I also give them Rapashi uh, Bug Burger and Rapashi Morning Wood. I'll put a link in the description to those foods as well. And that's about it for feeding. They, they do pretty well and they appreciate a little bit of variety. So I give them the supplementary foods at least a couple of times a week and they thrive on that. Temperature wise, they do well at room temperatures. My uh, house temperature varies between about 68 and 78 over the course of the year and they seem to do fine at those temperatures. As far as hydration is concerned for these millipedes, it's really pretty easy. You don't need to worry about putting a water dish or anything like that. Just make sure the substrate is a little bit moist. A, bit, a good way to do that, and make sure you don't have any millipedes in the substrate you test this with, of course, Take a handful of substrate and squeeze a little bit. And if you can feel a little bit of moisture on your hand, but water doesn't drip out, then you're just about right. And as long as you maintain the substrate that way, they'll be fine. Now, this particular millipede I'm holding was hatched here. Most of the millipedes in this enclosure were hatched here. Uh, they are not terribly difficult to captive breed. Uh, basically, just make sure you have males and females and follow the care information that I just provided 
let's see, I'm going to find a male and a female to show you how easy they are to sex. You can see this is a male. Not only is it more slender than the females, but a few segments behind the head, there are some enlarged segments. And those are known as the saddle. Only the males have that. Let's get a female for comparison. You can see that the segments behind her head are, are much thinner and uh, more symmetrical, so to speak, in comparison to his here. So you can also see that she's quite a bit uh, wider than he is and gets a little longer. So they're very easy to sex. You can also begin to use that method at a fairly young age. They do not have to be mature um, for that method to work. Um, I see them, they're usually uh, easy to distinguish when they're about two inches long. You can, you can tell male from female pretty easily. So as long as you keep them together, they will likely lay eggs. And the best thing to do is to just leave those little babies in the substrate and the, the parents will not bother them and they will grow up in your enclosure just fine as you can see that they have done in this enclosure. One thing when you do change out substrate, which you do want to do periodically, is not throw that substrate away. Uh, you can take it and store it in another container like this and keep it moist and keep it for a few months and you may find after you've kept it for a few months that you're seeing baby millipedes. And if you had thrown that substrate away, you would have thrown the millipedes uh, along with it. So make sure that whenever you change any substrate, you keep it for several months and check it before you dispose of it because you wouldn't want to lose the baby millipedes. No discussion of millipede care would be complete without mentioning that when millipedes molt, they are very vulnerable. Their exoskeleton remains quite soft for a period of time. And if they're disturbed during that time, it can hurt or kill them. So if your millipedes dig down into the substrate and you don't see them, resist the temptation to dig them out. If you do so, you will likely do them much more harm than good. Okay, so let's talk about the pros and cons of owning ivory millipedes. And we'll start with the pros. First, they're really pretty easy to take care of. They're one of those pets that you can leave for a week as long as you make sure that their substrate is properly hydrated and that they have some supplementary food a little bit before you go and then just close their container, let them go for a week. They're usually totally fine as long as the temperatures in your house are in the proper range. Ivory millipedes are one of the most surface active millipedes in the hobby. There are millipedes that don't show up much at the surface when they're young and then they do more when they're adults and there are other species that don't show up much at the surface at all. But ivory millipedes are one species that you'll be able to see fairly often just uh, milling about on the surface. Another advantage of ivory millipedes is that they are quite available depending on where you live. I know that there are captive bred populations in Europe and certainly in the US they're fairly easy to obtain. Many of those are wild caught, but there are many captive bred individuals. I think all of the ones that I have now um, are captive bred. So um, that's a, a great factor because they're so easy to breed. Many of the ones that you can get in the hobby now, um, you know, you need to confirm because they are still wild caught, but they're fairly easy to obtain captive bred and they're not very expensive because of that. So this is a millipede that you can get for, you know, maybe five to $7. Uh, each uh, in, a, in contrast to some of the more exotic millipedes that may cost upwards of $100. So not only are they fairly easy to obtain, they are fairly inexpensive. And the beauty of the pattern is just striking. I find many people with whom I interact, even non-bug people, find that they just love the pattern and colors on ivory millipedes. And I, I tend to agree with them. They're pretty fabulous. And let's talk a little bit about cons. There are a few cons to this species. One is that some people are looking for a millipede that gets a little bigger. I mean, four and a half inches, four to four and a half inches is not super small, but it's not very large either. And there are larger millipedes uh, that are obtainable. And so if size is really important to you in terms of the millipede, then this may not be the perfect species for you. Although I, I think they're a perfect size for a pet millipede myself. Another con, and this is a con that really all millipedes share, is that if they are, they feel threatened or uncomfortable, they will often release something called a repugnatorial fluid. 
and this is a substance that has kind of a strong smell to it and it's it will stain your skin if it stays on your skin for too long it's a great way to defend themselves from predators but it's kind of unpleasant when it gets onto us now if you rinse it off right away it won't stain but if you let it sit there and dry on your skin your skin will get a stain for a few days it's not a big deal and in this species of millipede it's not particularly dangerous but just in case you have a sensitivity or something I would go ahead and wash it off um, as soon as it happens and then of course you don't have to deal with the stain I was uh, marked by the the fluid yesterday on this finger but you can't see it because I rinsed it off now one aspect of owning ivory millipedes that some people might uh, consider a con I don't really but some people might is that they uh, can be inclined to nibble on you very gently if they're feeling particularly hungry especially if they uh, want a little bit of protein so sometimes when you pick them up if they haven't had a proteinaceous snack in a little while or if they're just feeling curious about what they're sitting on they may well uh, nibble on you very very lightly it doesn't hurt it kind of tickles actually in my opinion but it might surprise some people so that's just something to keep in mind they're certainly not capable of doing you any damage one negative aspect of owning ivory millipedes or any millipede for that matter is that uh, their substrate can attract a small insect known as a fungus gnat and these insects are more of an annoyance than anything else they don't really do a lot of damage but they can uh, get into your enclosures and, and be kind of annoying and so if you make sure that the enclosure is very well sealed and that any ventilation that you provide has a very fine mesh fabric on it then you shouldn't have much of a problem with fungus gnats uh, you can also uh, help prevent fungus gnats from getting into your cultures by keeping springtails they, they tend to outcompete the fungus gnats and eat the things that attract the fungus gnats and so I have a healthy population of springtails in my isopod enclosures as well as my millipede enclosures to help uh, prevent issues with fungus gnats and I have been experimenting with a biological control these mosquito bits as you can see are marketed as also controlling fungus gnats so I'll put a link in the description to these I found them pretty useful basically these are granules of corn that have um, some bacteria Bacillus thuringiensis that are specifically um, they specifically target the digestive systems of larval flies like mosquitoes like fungus gnats and so what I do is take a small amount of dechlorinated water I soak a few of these granules in there and when it's time to moisten the soil or the substrate in here I just pour a little bit of that in with my ivory millipedes now I've done this several times it does seem to help uh, control the fungus gnat population and it hasn't had any negative effects on the millipedes I can't guarantee that that will be the same for you but for me it's been pretty effective and I don't see any fungus gnats in here so those are basically the pros and cons of keeping ivory millipedes I'd like to take a moment to thank all of our patreon backers every single pledge makes a difference and the more pledges we have the more we can do on this channel so what do you think are ivory millipedes the best pet invertebrate let me know in the comments if you haven't seen my other videos on this topic this video is part of a series on best pet invertebrates so please feel free to check out the rest of the playlist also if you like this video please like share comment and if you haven't already subscribe and then click on the bell icon so you don't miss my next video